Hi, everybody, and welcome to Talking Cars with the Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm John Linkove. I'm Gabe Shenhar. And I'm Ryan Pizlikowski. We've been driving some fancy cars recently. We've got two Land Rovers. Gabe, what, what's the deal with two Land Rovers? Well, um, it's a big year for Land Rover. We have never tested the Range Rover. And, the full boat uh, it, Range Rover. The full Monty Range Rover that's been out for four decades. So finally, we're testing it. This is the fourth generation. We were pretty impressed with it uh, when we um, drove a press car. And uh, we decided, you know what, it's about time. And the Range Rover Sport, we've we were already, uh, we've done one in 2008. So it's uh, pretty much run of the mill, highest volume kind of car for Land Rover. So, um, and I actually had it for the weekend um, and it uh, surprised me how badly it did in the snow, so. Yeah, there's <laughs> something weird going on with the Range Rover Sports tires. Ryan, can you explain for us? Yeah, it has summer tires on it. That seems crazy <laughs> for a... Um, That's yeah. not only crazy, I'd say it's criminal because it's, it's, uh, the, these because uh, Gabe tires... Because Gabe his words, uh, you know. Ah, <laughs> you had, you had, lock them up. Yeah, I mean, th this is a car for, you know, you can see it very often in affluent suburban, uh, areas, soccer moms drive them, and you can't expect these co these people to pay attention to tires. Mm -hmm. right? well, you expect to say, Land Rover, it's go anywhere, I'm good, right? Yeah. You'd Not think so. so. Well, yeah, Ryan, what, so. tell us, what tires are on it? And it has Michelin Latitude Sports on it, which are summer tires for SUVs like a Cayenne or... Michelin says they're summer tires? Yeah, they're summer tires. Well, this is the story. I was walking through the garage and like no, most people, I was checking out the tires on the car, right? Everyone looks at that's the That's what tires. we do <laughs> always. I mean, the <laughs> no, look at tires. Tires. No, tires and spark that's plugs. That's what I was a looking. typical customer to yeah. do, right? Right, the wheels were cut and, and look at the, the tires were sticking support. out. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the tires were sticking out because the wheel was cut to the right. And I, I'm looking, and it looks like a Michelin Pilot Super Sport that we t just tested on our BRZ this past year in the tire test. And I'm like, what? Walk over, take a look at it, and it's a summer tire on this Range Rover, and it does have an M&S symbol on it. And then I'm like, ah, take, so I go take a look online, and there, uh, Michelin claims it's a summer tire. It's a summer tire. Now, uh, is there, but is there any threshold a tire needs to meet to be no. M, M plus S? Well, actually, to have M and S symbol, it, it has, there is a, um, there's a certain tread geometry it has to have, but there's mm -hmm. no actual test that requires, that it has to pass to get an M and S on the sidewall. So, it sounds, so it sounds like Gabe went and did a test this weekend. Well, <laughs> that was a perfect test snow. because we had our first snowstorm of the season. And you'd think, you know, like any other normal customer, <laughs> I bought a Land Rover, Range Rover Sport, I'm good, right? All wheel drive. Oh, you're better than good. Even uh, special modes for snow, which I tried, but didn't make any one bit of a difference. What does I it mean, do? Well, the first corner, you're uh, slowing down. You lock up the, the front tires, the car goes straight. Any stop sign you want to stop for, forget it. You better hope that nobody, nobody is there because you're not making it. I drove it. Uh, you took it to Vermont, Vermont on yes. a snowy weekend. Like, what the hell are you doing? Well, you know, Ryan called it a death sled because of the, <laughs> I uh, did the no summer tires. Thing. He, uh, you know, he, he said, "Go have a good time with your wife in the death sled." And uh, I took it up to Vermont, and it was which, which you then retracted. I to did. be fair, for any of the I, lawyers in the audience, Ryan the did main, retract main the sled. I think we said sled. Sled. it may become. It may an unsafe vehicle. There's a 30% <laughs> chance of. I updated my insurance. Let's just put it that way, okay? We got the beneficiary set. Um, so took it to Vermont, and we had like a, a rainy, snowy mix, and it was fine in the rain. Right. It was fine in the wet. Going yep. down, you know, 7%, 8% grades from the resort area, it was fine. We crossed into Connecticut where it was snowing, and just like Gabe said, you come to a stop sign, all of a sudden ABS engages, it, um, you know, the ESC starts, it, it just starts sliding one direction, sliding another. So, yeah, the tires, and that was just like a little bit of snow. It wasn't right. the five inches or seven inches we got up here. This was a dusting. First yeah. off, I'm bothered because on the same weekend I went to the Berkshires, and somehow I wind up in a Chevy Impala instead of a Range Rover Sport. Well, this was what, two what's, weekends what's ago. Uh, well, that's... Yeah. Uh, I was safe. Weekend. I was safe. Yeah, same. <laughs> but I've not been able to get... I haven't been able to drive that thing. It's yeah. been so popular. But... We have a dream garage now. So... Things are pretty good. How you haven't been in any one of these cars is... Uh, I've is got... Probably... <laughs> uh, hey, look. There's a Kia Soul. There is a... Yeah, yeah there's that. That's pretty sweet. It's got yeah. heated everything. I mean, that's pretty, pretty good. But we have a dream garage with a Range Rover, with the Mercedes S-Class, with a Porsche 911. It's like, what more do you want? 
It's like actually, games weekend evening. Of just <laughs> <laughs> actually, there is a dilemma here because what do I do about the Tesla now? I do like the Range Rover. I do like mm. the full boat Range Rover that we have. And it was hard to buy that, wasn't it? Oh, it was, uh, it was a, we almost didn't have one because uh, apparently what happens is you order a car, you put a $2,500 deposit on it, you wait five, six months. So Why, we, why do I have to wait so long? Because is the boat they, slow uh, coming from England? <laughs> Lucas Electronics they, in the boat. A lot of cold. There is a huge <laughs> demand for them in countries like Russia and China and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And, um, and some, uh, some of these cars uh, are bought or are... Uh, some exporters are trying to buy them here and ship them overseas, which Land Rover doesn't allow that to happen. And you, you, can, you buy it here so, for 90 and you, you double or triple your price. Right, wow. exactly. So uh, when I started uh, calling around, everything was sold, even inventory online. Everything was sold orders. People order them four or five months prior. So uh, just somehow I fell on this dealer and I spoke to the, the sales manager and we're talking about this car that I'm looking at the screen and he says, uh, I noticed there's some hesitation in his voice, he kept listening, he said, well, that car was sold as of four hours ago. So I, at that point I said, okay, that's it. This is our we're chance. We're done, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I asked to uh, see the invoice of the car and see all the options and everything. And I'll call you back, I'll call you back, call you back. Shoot, sure. never called back. I took the initiative into my own hand. I drove down to the dealership. I put the deposit on it. I bought the car. Nice. So yeah, I like it too. Uh, that I mean, Range Rover and is. And it's a fairly uh, cheap one. It's. It's a ninety. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the. Set the table there, Tom. It, it's it's eighty eight grand. It is. It's the HSE, uh, which is. So both of these have the same supercharged. Uh, V6 supercharged engine, which replaced uh, the original engine, the normally aspirated V8. Have we met a supercharged V6 we haven't liked? Um, uh, it's the same that, engine uh, as in the Jaguar XF, by the way. Oh, that, that updated yeah. that one, yeah. Right. So, what, do you, what do you think of the Range Rover, Ryan? Oh, it's, I think it's impressive. It's, um, that engine's impressive. It's peppy. That's a, that, you step on it and that thing goes. Well, they it, went, it can't be a light vehicle. I, mean, well, I don't no, know what it weighs, but. They got a ton yeah. of, almost a almost. ton of weight. <laughs> <laughs> they shed 800 yeah. pounds of the Range Rover. Right, but it, it feels quick for, you know, it's the size of the vehicle it is. And, um, but, the only issue, yeah. I mean, I, the only thing I saw noticed with that car is the, the, and we had talked about it, is that that wheel bearing noise that we hear. I don't know if that's just our sample or what, but there is a little bit of a. No, you're right. You noise. drive it, and right yeah. in your ears, wah, 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 Right, wah, wah. and I don't, I'm not sure if that's true on every one, but it's. Um, other than that, I mean, it's it's, it's a Range Rover. I mean, I mean, the it's car plush. is. Uh, I mean, the ride is amazing. I mm -hmm. mean, it's very comfortable. It's very mm -hmm. quiet. Maybe that's why you hear the the wheel bearing. Because you don't hear anything right. else. Right. Well, yeah, that could, yeah. It's so you're hearing the next best screaming. thing, right? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ouch, 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 ouch. Exactly, ouch, ouch. exactly. I mean, the car puts you in a mood of very relaxed kind of uh, demeanor. You know, it's, it's not a sporty SUV. Right. Uh, no. As opposed to not, the Range Rover Sport. Sport. Or a Cayenne. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, but it's very luxurious, it's very comfortable, it's very, uh, it's, it's meant to be, to just waft along comfortably and enjoy the interior and, and that has i mean that that, that car has such drive swagger <laughs> yeah, I know. That, we're all going to reach out of here to get <laughs> my name already already tagged, tagged. Yeah. so yeah i'd one. probably have the kia again mm. um and that car has normal all season tires on it yeah so it does regular right and they they resemble all season tires so we i, I, I double checked it but. so you know, are, if, if, the one thing with that right? the new Goodyear's. range rover the big beast yeah. is that the previous generation seemed like it was just a slight evolution from generation two and one almost. You still felt like you were in a truck. You still felt really sitting up high. I almost felt tippy in that vehicle. And this yeah, one... Yeah, I've overcooked one of those in a corner and was not pleased. You know, like you're all. looking out the side. And again, yeah. you could take those off-road and it's amazing. The articulated oh, yeah. suspension, you know, you can look at the ground and it's holding steady. It's a great vehicle, but they felt really tippy. This one you feel much more in a modern SUV, mm -hmm. but you still know you have the Range Rover capabilities. Yep. And that's what I really find surprising about mm -hmm. it. Yep. So we're going to test those two. Uh, we're going to find out how they do. Another car that visited the track recently is the Cadillac ELR. Explain what an ELR is. The ELR is Cadillac's uh, version of uh, the Chevy Volt. It's based on the same kind of uh, semi-electric uh, drivetrain. And it's, it's stylish. It's only a two-door coupe. It's, uh, it looks beautiful. It's a it's like car. A I mean, it's rolling like, it's sculpture. like the Converge. Uh, it, it's pro right. probably one of the few cars that's as close to the concept, the Converge concept car as right. it is. 
I think though Cadillac lost, they lost their way because there's one little thing everybody's focusing on. The price. The fact that this is seventy-six freaking thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean that's wow. way that's at I least twenty thousand dollars more. Yeah. Than <laughs> she didn't know what seventy. <laughs> wow. Well, how much? Okay, okay, here we go. What did you think it was worth? I would have guessed around fifty. And that would have been a an appropriate sort yeah. of guess for an, an ATS size, yeah. you know, a smaller two. That turns my head this way, you know, towards a Tesla. That's crazy. Oh, that's rubbing against a Tesla yeah. at that price. Well, a yeah. Tesla can go. It's twice you know, the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla that's parked behind us can go 300 miles on an electric only range, whereas this is wow. good for 37. That's insane. Did? I didn't know it was that much. Um, money. Yeah, well, they claim 35. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> It's it's kind of it's it's a it's got the old GM huge thick A pillars. Well, it's the styling. I mean, right, it, right. It's but it's the... GM's made a big push now to having you know much thinner A pillars, better visibility. You know, they even told us mm. a couple years ago that that was a big program yep. for 2014. Yeah, right. This doesn't have it, so you already have just visibility issues. It's very nice. I mean, the sample oh, we had yeah. with the the cut and sew and the suede and the leather and yeah, the sporty no, no. seats and everything. Cadillac, Cadillac is building. You know, I know people on oh, the yeah. comments bitch and moan. Oh, it's not as good as your German car inside. You haven't been in the damn car. Yeah, the, the oh, car is oh, it's fantastic really inside. Nice inside. But, but yeah. it doesn't really. You know, it's it's not sporty. There's no real. Well, not every car has to be sporty. But that's right. what the the angular styling and and the the wide flanks and everything says about the vehicle. I think the, 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 and it's just it's a Volt that's gussied up, and it's not as practical as a Volt that's gussied up. The bigger disconnect is that it doesn't give you the driving experience you would expect from a seventy-five thousand dollar car. It doesn't have the the size, the uh, and it's the power. Quick. It's not particularly quick. It is quieter than it the Volt. It is quieter than the Volt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I drove it and. I felt fancy driving it. You know, I mean, it, look, it, it's it's a very, it's a gorgeous car. It is. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous oh, it inside and out. Mm -hmm. It's pretty quiet. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I can do a lot of my commute on electric only. I mean, you know, in a way, this car makes sense because it, it's it's a showpiece saying, "Look, I drive a kind of mostly electric car." But I boy, think, seventy-six uh, grand. I think people are going to buy it for the styling. I mean, it's uh, without even reg regardless of the electric piece of it. I think you're right. People yeah. may not even bother charging it. <laughs> That's very true. Well, yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah. When the engine kicks in, it's not a pleasant experience. Eh, it's not that it's bad. Not I mean, bad. Yeah, I didn't, it, didn't it, like driving it around. I drove the, it a lot of side streets, you know, ate the battery down pretty quickly. And The revs have mm. no, because remember, the engine in a Volt, the engine in an ELR, isn't, they don't even call it an engine, they call it a gas Gen generator. generator. It, it doesn't have any relationship to how mm -hmm. fast the car is going. It will go, you know, it just, it's just, in, just most, in most modes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it just goes. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a ton of modes that right. you can play with. I mean, it, it's a nice car, 76 grand is... Uh, there's a to, big disconnect there. It makes the 911 <laughs> rear seats look useful. It almost makes a 911 look like a bargain. Mm -mm. Some ways. Yeah. One of us on the staff called it a uh, seventy-six thousand dollar Chevy Cruze. Painful. Yeah, no, there's a lot. Well, of, I mean, yeah. you know, there aren't many cars that <laughs> it, it, it shares the same platform, sort of, right. and there aren't many platforms that go from seventeen thousand dollars to seventy-six thousand dollars, if any. Let me think. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. We'll give you time to think. If you come up with anything later in the show, we'll 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 check back in. Mm. Uh, I want to deal with some housekeeping issues. Uh, a couple questions that have come up on YouTube. Uh, people are asking, how's testing going with the Mazda 3 and the Accord Hybrid? Uh, the 3 is uh, going very well, almost done with them. We have a sedan, we have a hatchback with a manual and a higher trim, and uh, you know, with the uh, knob you're, and the... You're shaking your head. <laughs> you, you enjoy that car. Yeah, it's uh, very enjoyable, isn't it? Yeah. The shifter is, is, is delicious. What's I didn't that? drive it yet. Okay, let's oh. back. Let's... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> let's let's back. Let's, Damn, we're so let's, close. let's let's redo that part. So close to one take. I've been driving the tire uh, test truck for the past month. Have you been <laughs> driving the tire test truck? For yeah, the last I've been putting month? miles on the tires, breaking tires. Well, that's right. We yeah. buy all these, like we talked about in the last show. We yeah. buy all these tires, and you right. have to put miles. Break on them in. Them. So that's yeah. you're, you're stuck driving the tire test truck. Yeah. I'm driving the Impala and the Soul. Gabe's driving. Gabe's driving. You're profiling in the S-Class and the Range Rovers. And <laughs> Someone's got to do it, right? What do I need to do to be you? you got to move 100 miles away so that you can put Take miles on the Take your put it on the car. You're nah, right. that's, <laughs> I just have to beat you. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're testing the Mazda 3s. They're, they're on their way, but mm -hmm. winter came 
early. Too and early. That's when, really what I was smiling about, is we haven't been able to do actual testing because the track's been covered in snow. Yeah, it's been cold. normally it's not like this in yeah. Connecticut in December. Uh, right. we're, we're doing what we can to get the Mazda 3s tested. We're really doing what we can to get the Jeep Cherokees tested. We've got two Cherokees. We have mm -hmm. a, a Limited and a Latitude, one a four, one a six cylinder. Uh, really trying to get those results out. Yeah. And the Accord Hybrid. What's the Accord going on Hybrid is uh, was supposed to go on sale at the end of October, and uh, none have shown up around here yet. Yeah, Honda normally is very good that when mm -hmm. they say a car is coming out, you can set your watch by yeah, a yeah, usually it's, it's a lot like, like the press cars. You know, you, you see in the auto show the car and it has <laughs> these right. thin little uh, mirrors and the no Acura door handles. Acura MDX concept. <laughs> right. And then the next like, month it's the MDX. Slap on door handles yeah. and wipers and you see it. So <laughs> yeah, you would think the Beyond. You wonder is it pre-sold in other markets like California or is it just? I don't know. Yeah, it, it's slow. What's going on? It's with slow that? coming here. Uh, another question about fuel efficient cars. Got a question from a reader. Would a Volkswagen Golf TDI, the current version, be a good first car for somebody? What do you think, Ryan? The first car. The somebody. First car, yeah. Their first car. Like, are they yeah, like 17, 18 year old kids? I don't Meaning? know. YouTube not good at telling me that, mm -hmm. but. I would, uh, I, out of all the options, I think uh, it would be a really reasonable. I mean, choice. I would have been. I would have been excited. Thrilled. Thrilled. Oh, I'd be thrilled. <laughs> yeah. Instead of to have that as my first car. Save oh an A1 yeah. Electra. Yes, I would have been thrilled to have it. <laughs> you know, as, as a, look, if you're lucky enough to have a 20 something thousand, 17 plus thousand dollar car. We start about car, buying a used one. Yeah. You know, so, again, yeah. so now used, you start saying, fine, you know, a little bit of warranty, maybe left on a great, mm -hmm. out of pocket expenses, particularly if there's any fuel system. They've been issues. reliable enough. You've yeah. got to be yeah. careful as hell not to put gas in those yeah. because you put gas <laughs> in comes the rapidly diesel, it becomes very expensive, very, very, <laughs> very, 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 it becomes yep. rapidly unreliable. That's yeah. right. So again, with that great mileage, particularly if the, if the child or, mm -hmm. you know, child driving far distances or going to college, whatever that is. It's a safe but car. It's a safe yeah. car. Very safe. Yeah. It's a good car. Yeah. yeah. Good in the winter. You know, if you live in winter climb, set of snow tires. No, absolutely. Sure, I'd say it'd be perfect. I would, I would say, yeah. I mean, he, he also asked stick or the DSG stick. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah, the stick, but uh, make sure you uh, went to the Gabe Shanhar driving school before. In the diesel, in the diesel, in the diesel, I'd say stick for sure. Yeah. If it was like a GTI or, you know, a 1.8T or something like that, I would say DSG. I, I like the DSGs for its sportiness, but the diesel's not that sporty. The DSG is yeah. a little smoother in those cars, I think, than, than in the diesel. Mm -hmm. Right. It's yeah, yeah. The stick you can better modulate mm -hmm. it. Uh, one other YouTube question. Uh, somebody is coming to near the end of the lease on their Mustang GT. Um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. They basically want to get a car with a crazy amount of power. They have up to 50 grand. Do they do they go with the new G new Mustang? What are your thoughts Ooh, on the new Mustang GT? Wait for the new one. Yeah. Yeah. Hold hold out. Wait they also we mentioned the Chevy SS. Well, I was gonna say wait till we sell our Corvette. <laughs> right. There we that go. Might be in that, that price range. I think they'll yeah. lease. I think they'll <laughs> lease again. Um, here's the thing. You're gonna pay a premium on the Mustang for the first year. You think pay, it'll be that? I think there'll be a premium in the beginning. They there's going to be a lot. They, they'll crank them out much more than they, they make. They'll make more. But you're going to pay a premium. So if you extend your lease maybe a couple months to wait, also you don't necessarily want to buy first rolling off the line. Mm, yeah, sure that's you know, ooh, 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 ooh. because Ford, Ford's first year reliability Ford's has been crap. Not good. Right. No. I mean, there are usually some updates, some recalls. You want those, those uh, early problems to be over with. So and I wait uh, if you can't hold out, we have a Focus ST for you for sale. Yeah. There you go. You can save a bunch of money. Crazy John and Gabe's Car Mart. I just got it down. <laughs> and if you don't want to buy a car, Gabe will teach you how to drive stick. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm kind of excited to drive the new Mustang oh, GT yeah. because if they, they got some of the weight out, independent rear suspension. Oh, uh, finally. The mm -hmm. car drove. The, look, the old car with the old solid live rear axle Still drove a blast, great. Yeah. It sounded yeah. great. Sounded great, it went great, but drove great? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it on the died. track with the, you know, it drove plenty well. That nose dive and the roll and the understeer, uh, not so much. Ah. Hey, at least it's probably going to have knobs for my Ford Touch. It does. It will have knobs for my Ford Touch. Right there, it's an improvement. Uh, one other thing, the guy mentioned a Chevy SS. Mm -hmm. you, oh. We've driven a Chevy SS. Love that car. That was terrific. Yeah. We, we love yeah. the G8. Remember yes. the G8? Oh, yeah. It's, that's, that's what it is. It's a next generation yeah. oh. G8. Okay. So that's, yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah. we, we've that points in a positive it's, direction. It's very nice inside. It sounds great. It's a lot of money, but it's 
Very yeah, I mean, it's $45,000, $47,000, but for what you get, I mean, forget that it's a Chevy. I mean, this car is, is like a, the equivalent of a BMW 5 Series, basically. In concept, I mean, it's a, a rear-wheel drive. It's a well-honed European sports sedan, for all intents and purposes, with the heart of a Corvette. And in the last uh, of the holding cars that we're going to get in the United States, because of GM's announcement, they're going to be pulling, yeah. pulling oh, the plug on holding. Yeah. So. Right. If you uh, like that that Australian uh, link, this is the car to get. It's already gonna. It's gonna be limited production as it is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if you want one, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work on getting. Or you could get pulled over in a state where they use them as a police car. <laughs> and you right. can get a free you, ride in the back. You just of buy it. a Caprice <laughs> <cop> car. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, we'd love it if you checked out our sister podcast, Talking Tech. The electronics guys, they're going to talk about the new stuff that's in Consumer Reports Electronics Labs. Give that a check out. Until then, thanks so much.